Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Increase Revenue Opportunities with Multi-Channel Marketing. I'm Jeanette Rumsey, the Corporate Education and Engagement Manager for Acadata, and today's webinar moderator. Before we get started, I'd like to go through a few key points with you. First of all, questions can be submitted throughout today's webinar, but will be covered at the end of our presentation. Please use the Q&A panel within the GoToWebinar platform to submit your questions. And if there are questions that we do not cover, you can email those to info at Accudata.com for a prompt reply. You can also call your Accudata account representative at 800-732-3440. And please stay tuned for a special gift that we'll be sharing with our attendees following today's presentation. Next, I'd like to go ahead and introduce you to our presenters today, Nate Patel and Mark Scott. Nate is Accudata's Executive Vice President of Sales and Service and has been with Accudata since 2002. Nate is responsible for all aspects of sales, business development, and customer service across Accudata's three sales divisions. And Mark is a VP of Business Development, and he's been working with Accudata for 16 years. His primary focus is in the reseller channel, working with our printer and mailer partners to help them maximize profits in all types of database marketing. So, Nate, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and turn over the webinar to you. All right. Thanks, Jeanette. Well, welcome, everyone, to the webinar. Uh, we appreciate you've all taken the time out today and uh, hope the material is very helpful for you. Uh, let's just jump right into the agenda. First, uh, today we're going to cover the basics of multi-channel. Uh, next, we're going to discuss the value of offering multi-channel solutions to your clients. And there's a note on that. Uh, verbiage today is going to be somewhat reseller focused, but the concept should apply to any end users on the call as well. Um, Mark's then going to jump in and he's going to take us through third party data. And then he'll give us some how to's on incorporating digital channels. Uh, and then we have some case studies that we've mixed in as well. I'll wrap up with uh, creative, impact, uh, creative and impactful engagement. And finally, we'll take some questions at the end. All right, so let's uh, jump right in with some of the whys. According to the DMA, it takes 7 to 13 touch, touch points before conversion happens. So now more than ever before, uh, those touches are coming from a wide variety of media channel and, and channel options. It's a great slide. We've got, uh, t so today the consumers interact with brands in whatever manner suits them. They're also entering into and completing the buying cycle in very personal ways. So like, take a look at the three folks on the, on the screen here. We've got Charles. He reads his mail, but he shops online. And conversely, Allison is looking at her email, email all day, but rarely reads any postal communications. And then there's Paul. He's traveling a bunch, and he's getting all of his information through social channels. So if marketers and the brands they represent are going to stay relevant, they need to show up how and where the targeted consumer prefers. If your client focuses on a particular channel but ignores the others, two of the three example consumers I just reviewed, they miss out entirely. We have to help our clients reach their, their customers and prospects on their own turf, so to speak. So let's start off by defining what multi-channel marketing is. In simplest terms, multi-channel marketing is the use of more than one media channel to communicate with customers and prospects. These channels can include both indirect and direct options. Uh, direct channels are one-to-one -one lines of communication to your desired audience, and the indirect channels are broader in reach, uh, typically leveraged to build awareness and rapport. We have some samples uh, listed here like uh, email on the direct side, blogs on the indirect side. For the purpose of this webinar, though, we're going to focus on the direct side. And the key is combining multiple direct channels for your clients can help increase response and engagement. Now that we just went through the why uh, and, and why it's the multi-channel is beneficial to brands and end users, let's turn the focus to you, the reseller. Let's get an understanding on why this approach is so valuable to your offering. Take a look at this, uh, this stat from Excelgen, a leading CRM provider. This year, roughly 60% of marketers are holding steady or reducing dollars earmarked for print. And while print might be holding steady, Look at the increases in the digital space. We've got a 60% uptick on email, and we've got 56% increase on online display and social advertising. 
when you really drill down on how much screen time we, we log as consumers, this trend towards digital is not a surprise at all. We're spending more than 50 hours per week on our devices, and according to Nielsen, that's 10 and a half hours a day for adults, and the number is rising. In fact, it's up an hour since 2014. Smartphones alone account for almost 100 minutes of that activity each day. You know, back to our example, if Paul's on his smartphone all day while he travels, doesn't it make sense to reach him there? So we know, the, so we know your client, the end user, wins with multi-channel, but how do you, the reseller, benefit? Well, you're keeping a share of the wallet that may have otherwise been lost to a competitor of yours. You're adding revenue streams from print-only clients. Plus, there is loyalty that is created not only from increased offerings, but from executing responsive campaigns. You know, circling back to our example again, by adding multi-channel components to your current print offerings, you're going to help your clients reach Allison and Paul instead of just targeting Charles. All right, now that we covered the whys for you and your clients, Mark is going to take us through third-party data and the hows of multi-channel. Thanks, Nate. Um, so third-party data is really the newest buzzword, and essentially means data that's not that doesn't directly belong to you, but can be hugely and help you know hugely helpful for you. Um, you know, it says here that more than more than 43% of U.S. marketers are using third-party data to personalize their marketing campaigns. So whether a client comes to you with their own postal file in the form of a house list, or if they need prospects to work with, third-party data can help you target, help you segment, and help you analyze the results. Most importantly, when you're choosing a provider to get data from, make sure that you choose someone who has multiple sources of data and can make recommendations based on what is going to work best for you and what you're looking to achieve. We want to talk about sourcing of the databases a little bit. And sourcing for third-party data uh, typically begins with a public record type source. So think of if you own a home and you pay property taxes and you have a deed, all of that information is public record. From there, we can add things like contra contractual sources or transactional behavior or online web sources that kind of build out a bigger picture of what that consumer or that household might look like. Um, also, there are hotline files, which are trigger-based databases, and they often signify a major life change. So think of things like purchasing a home or moving to a new apartment or getting married or getting divorced or having a child or becoming an empty nester. Um, your thoughts, decisions, and buying cycles or behaviors all change with these major life events. Here we have some of the major categories of different demographics I would say that we would work with most often. And we've kind of broken them down a little bit from your standard demographics like an age or an income or a marital status or presence of children to some of your lifestyle or behavioral type data. And then, you know, where, is, where do you live? What type of home do you live in? What's the square footage? What's the property size? Um, that sort of thing. And then we touched on that kind of hotline, uh, new homeowner, new mover, pre-mover um, type data sets. Again, those are things, like, they signify a life event. Your, your thought process and, and cycles are completely different when you're in that frame of, of mind versus when you're established in a home. And we can't forget about the B2B side, right? So in business databases, you do have the ability to take the entire business landscape and chunk it down based on things like the industry or the employee size or sales volume or ownership categories, that sort of thing. So when we talk about how you can integrate a digital solution into your print environment, how easy is it, how does it work, and you know what are the best courses of action? So we'll go through that here a little bit. What you see here is, is basically classic marketing. So there's really not a major difference here, right? So it all comes down to having your message in front of the right person at the right time with consistent messaging and branding to make sure that whatever the message is that you're trying to get across resonates with the recipient. When you're choosing a provider, you want to make sure that they can support both online and offline components of your campaign. And most importantly, that they're handling the design aspect and can maintain that consistency and branding across multiple channels. We're going to spend the next part of this webinar talking about three major categories and then finally give you a little bit of a, a creative design guideline here as well. So uh, we're going to talk about email marketing, digital display advertising that includes both IP targeting and social media display, um, as well as those creative services. So starting with email. 
tying back to print. When we marry postal and email together, adding an email component to an already existing direct mail campaign can be done for literally pennies per piece. And it can be done for either a house list or a purchase prospecting file. When you match postal to email, you can expect about a 50% match rate on a consumer list and about 15 to 20% on the business side. Uh, when you're working with a house file, we can append those email addresses and send that data back to you for you to deploy through your own retention provider, like a constant contact. If you're working with a list of prospects, though, the rules of engagement are a little bit different, and it's probably best that we manage that deployment for you. So why email? Think about it. 66% of consumers surveyed said that they make a purchase as a result of an email marketing message. Over half are more likely to purchase online from a brand that communicates with them online. And if you compare folks that are marketed to via email against those that are not, the ones that receive the email marketing message on average have spent 140% more than those that did not receive the marketing messages from your brand. So I want to frame this up into a real life example for you. And, and this case study is a it revolves around a client that came to us when they needed to increase their web traffic and mortar locations and they but in this case they were launching a new product that was only available online they needed to make sure that that launch was successful and that the most awareness on this product was given and the best way to do it it's an online product is to drive traffic to their website so what we did is we implemented a 12-week email marketing program that went that complemented their already successful and long-standing direct marketing or direct mail program and here's what we found out on a day when an email marketing message was sent, the brand experienced an increase in sales of an average of 15%. Taking sales out of it for the equation, just looking at overall web traffic, when you measure web traffic over the course of the campaign, Google Analytics showed that over a 50% increase in page views occurred, time on site was longer, and the total number of visits were, were more compared to uh, traffic that happened before the email marketing initiative was implemented. So it's pretty neat. And with Google Analytics, <laughs> Very trackable. Our next section on display advertising, we're going to focus first on uh, digital or IP-based display advertising. And there's really two types. We'll talk about social media here in a second. So IP matching is a technology where we can match a postal address to a user's IP address. And in my opinion, it's a perfect marriage of offline to online because using this technology in lockstep with your direct mail program allows you to market to the same individual in two different channels. The best part about IP display targeted advertising, or really social for that matter, is the fact that you know who the ads are being served to. In other types of display advertising, such as cookie-based display, the user has to take an action in order for them to receive an ad. You know, things like you know, searching for a specific product or landing on a given page where that cookie is dropped and then you can be retargeted to. With IP display, no action is necessarily needed by the prospect the ad will target the user based on the IP address and only serve to that individual or household. So it's been shown that combining print with a digital channel increases response rate by 35% and that users that are retargeted are 70% more likely to convert than those that are not. The reality is the average person spends more time online than TV and any other media combined. So you can't lose sight of that. Getting online with an offer that you traditionally only did offline is, is just the way, it's, a, it's another way to kind of increase that awareness. The second form of display advertising that I want to talk about is social media display. So these ads, rather than being generally on a website, are contained within the news feed or a timeline of a social media site. So we'll think Facebook as an example. Think about the last time that you were online and you were scrolling through your news feed and you noticed a sponsored ad on the site. That ad was either placed there because you met the profile that the advertiser was looking for or placed by a media agency that retargeted you based on a previous web traffic or search. You were cookied, right? Social media advertising is another great way to marry a digital component to print because, again, you're targeting the same individual both online and offline. And I think I mentioned this a bit ago, too. The fact that you know who you're serving to makes ad tracking and its effectiveness quite easy. So you can always match sales and engagement back to the list. kind of frame up the social media side of it, specifically with Facebook, there's over 162 million users in the U.S. and 1.7 billion worldwide. 
So think about the attention that people are paying to social media. The average user checks their newsfeed 14 times per day in total and spends about 50 minutes on a given day on a network actively engaged in consuming content. Facebook released a stat in Q2 of 2014 that stated that users purchased $234 million worth of goods tied to, face, tied to a Facebook ad in that quarter alone. Um, I definitely want a share of that. <laughs> so we want to give you another real life example because I think it's the easiest way to frame some of these up and I think this is a great story. Um, our team was compa contacted by a regional appliance co-op that wanted to increase their online presence. They do direct mail. They have brick and mortar locations, but they're selling a very tangible product, appliances. Their marketing agency contacted us and explained to us that the end goal explained to us the end goal and we put together a multi-channel campaign that included direct mail, email, and social media advertising. They needed help to make sure that all three channels worked well together and that the design across the different channels used kind of the same language and same offers to basically make sure that it was all in sync. I'm going to turn it over to Nate and have him tell you more about the campaign and the results. Yeah, this is a great campaign. Our team uh, really tackled this together. And it, uh, uh, one of the outcomes there is that 50,000 emails were deployed for each store. But one of the coolest stats was that not every one of these locations even had a Facebook presence before we started with them. Um, and so that was just another value add that the team, the, the team uh, added in. On average, each store experienced between 300 and 1,000 new website visitors. And then one store had over 540% increase uh, in total page views. So really great stuff there. Let's talk a little bit more about the creative services. Um, one, of the, one stat that, uh, that it seems to keep getting shorter every time we hear it mentioned in a, in a webinar or a conference, with only three to five seconds to catch the attention of a prospective reader, brand recognition, creative optimization are essential. So here are some of the best practices to think about when creating digital. Layout should encourage engagements. Links, images, copies should be placed with the consumer experience and response in mind. Best practices, filters, and even the user's device, they all have to be considered. Resellers with expertise in print creative should pull in trusted partner that can help them achieve these best practices. These next two slides are actually just some creative uh, um, content examples from our team. Uh, this is one that where we took an offline, and you can see in the upper left there, a postcard, and then converted into a multi-channel, brand consistent marketing campaign. All the touch points make sense for the consumer and allow inter inter interaction across ver various channels and devices. The team worked really hard to create this content and to make it appear seamless no matter the channel. I always like to they catch up in your yeah. the, the thing that I always like to point out in this is the fact that when you look across multiple devices, right, that we, we talk about this when doing email marketing creative all the time is the fact that an email has to be mobile responsive and it has to, you know, if, if a user has to click and scroll and pinch and zoom, uh, like you said, that attention span of three to five seconds is lost on just trying to see what the message is, right? So in this example, and, and again, even the print side of it up here, the print piece is going to look and feel totally different. Well, it's going to react totally different than an online piece is going to be, right? When you receive a postcard, you pick it up, you flip it around, you may undo the tab, and that's how you interact with the piece. When you're on a, a piece of technology, you need to be able to get your call to actions above the fold. You need to have that there. Your, your links are clearly visible. You know what you're trying to get out of the users. So this example is great. That iPhone is going to look different than the iPad. It's got to look different than, it's got to render differently than the computer because screen sizes are all different. So from a coding standpoint, it's hugely important. Thanks, Mark. And then here's some more examples from the team. On the left, you've got uh, basically what we call a carousel ad that we did for uh, a client in, their, in a Facebook campaign. And then in the, in the top right on the screen, uh, we're, we're showing an example of one of the display ads that we built. And all of this stuff can be done from uh, basic print information or even just an idea that the client has. And then we can collaborate with them and then, to, as Mark said, keep that, that consistent theme throughout while, you know, providing the different channels and different devices, you know, the opportunity to interact in the, in the best way. But what action are we looking for? You know, digital creative, is, it's all about impactful engagements. By leveraging a combination of third-party data attributes that Mark talked about earlier and digital solutions, we can create rich, 
customer prospect audience segments for your clients. The net impact is going to be communications that are more personalized and relevant and timely for their consumers. You know, imagine if, as Mark said, imagine if someone opens up that email creative on their iPhone and has to pinch and scroll and zoom because it's not mobilely optimal. We've got marketing capabilities. Us through today's increased revenue opportunities with multi-channel marketing webinars. For attendees, a copy of our. I'd like to go ahead and start addressing those for you. Uh, please make sure that you are using the Q and A panel within GoToWebinar to submit your questions, and all will be available. We are going to post that to the resource section at Activata.com. So make sure that you watch for that if you would like to go through and review any of the information or share it with your coworkers. So Mark, I'm going to go ahead and give you the first question that has come in today. And we have an attendee asking, what is the easiest way to start a print-only client with a multi-channel approach? So my honest opinion on this one would definitely be email marketing. I think that um, being able to present a print client with adding an email component, uh, I always say for literally pennies per piece, um, is a very easy sell to do. Um, the good news is, is that even if you don't have the design staff to create the HTML side of it, that's something that your Accudata team can help you with. And um, sometimes we position these as bookend email campaigns, so it means that you'll kind of introduce the offer with an email, your direct mail piece will drop, and then you'll follow up on that offer with another email. So now you've got three touches to the same audience in two different channels, so it looks like a very uh, cohesive, well thought out campaign. Excellent. Thank you so much. We have another question that's come in. Uh, when I search for something on Online. Sometimes I see retargeting on Facebook after the fact. How do you address that for us, please? So it's funny because this actually uh, literally happened to me um, within the last couple of weeks. I was looking for a new door for my house, a new front door, and looked on Lowe's.com on my computer and was just surfing around. And, and I knew, I mean, knowing about this, I figured that there might be a possibility that I might be retargeted. But um, I went on to Facebook later on that day and was you know, surfing through the news feed, and all of a sudden Lowe's came up as an ad. And it wasn't just a door. It was the last door that I was on the website looking at. Um, so it's just it, it's funny to see it kind of happen in real life and be able to tie it together. Um, the, to answer the question, though, besides my cutesy little story, is the fact that um, the way that those things are tied together are really by, by three different things. So one could be the fact that I was cookied when I was out looking uh, on Lowe's.com and then it retargeted me based on that cookie. Uh, the second would be just the social media profile, so being able to tie my account uh, back to my Facebook account and that was the other option. Um, the third and in this example least likely option is the fact that I was targeted for a you know home improvement product based on certain attributes. Based on the fact that this was the one product I was looking at and it was that one, my guess is I was probably cooking. Excellent. That is great. Thank you so much. Okay, we've got so many great questions coming in. Thank you guys for your participation. So our next question is, I have clients that are working with other providers for their digital needs and I want to be able to win that business over. So what makes Accudata's offerings unique? Nate, would you address that for us, please? Yes. Uh, thanks, Jeanette. Uh, good question. So one of Accudata's value propositions, and it's, this is across really every channel, is that we work with multiple data providers. Um, a lot of our printer partners on the phone or on the webinar today have heard us say that in the past, and that just carries through on the digital front. This is going to allow you and your client, um, allow us to provide you and your client with data that works best for a specific campaign. And, and since we have those strong relationships, we're frequently able to extend pricing specifically structured for resellers. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of the suppliers out there are going to assist with the media buy, but they don't support the creative development. And as Mark mentioned, and as I did during the creative segment, you know, we can help there too. So that's definitely a value add. Excellent. Thanks so much. Um, Mark, I'm going to give this next set of questions to you. We actually have two questions that have come in, both about different append capabilities. Okay. We have one of our attendees that wants to know if IP addresses are appended to the client file or if we retain those for our use in deploying the campaign. And we have another question about the capability to do email append. Okay. Uh, traditionally, when we're working with IP-based uh, append or, or display campaigns, 
uh, we are typically appending the IP address and then immediately moving into a serve the ad mode. So um, when we're engaged in that process, we're typically not releasing an IP address. We're, we're actually using that IP to then go on and serve the ad. So um, I think that addresses question number one. Uh, question number two related to email appends, I would say that if it is a customer file, uh, you know, somebody that you've already done business with, we can append those records and we can email them back to you. Otherwise, if it's a prospecting list, say people that, um, you know, you either acquired from some other channel or you may have gotten from us, prospecting files, we treat those more as a match and deploy. I, earlier I mentioned kind of the rules of engagement are different. We would still take the data, we would append the data, but then we would immediately move into a, we'll send this email marketing message out for you. Uh, type scenario rather than giving you the email addresses back. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Nate, I'm going to go ahead and give this next question to you. Uh, what is the difference between digital display and retargeting with display? Okay, another great question. Uh, Mark covered a little bit of this uh, during his uh, portion of the webinar, but basically uh, digital display advertising is just a standalone campaign where you're going to choose the audience to deliver ads to. Retargeting with display, it's based on some other channel, either direct or email, and it, you're going to serve banners to the consumers that have also received the direct mail piece or email marketing, or in some cases have just opened the email message, and then we reserve them a, a, a display ad. So that's that's the difference there. Excellent. Thank you so much. So our next question that's coming in uh, is also related to email appends. And we have an attendee asking if they provide us with a list of physical addresses and contact names, are we able to provide email addresses for that list? So Mark, would you go ahead and address that? Sure. I think it relates a lot to the last question too. If it is a if it's a customer file or uh, another point, if it's a business file, which we don't talk about we haven't talked about too often, but if it's a B2B contact list, if you give me a name and an address, I can provide back the email address for you. If it's a consumer file, uh, again, if they are your customers and you have a business relationship with them, then I can do the email append and send those email addresses back to you. Uh, but again, if it's a prospecting list, it's probably best that we go ahead and do the email append, but we deploy the message on your behalf. That's excellent. Thank you. Just to remind everyone, because we've got several questions that have come in about the presentation, absolutely this will be available for you. Uh, we will post a copy of the actual recording of today's webinar to our Accudata.com resources page, and that should be live for you tomorrow afternoon. Also, we have a few questions that have been asked about pricing for specific services. We will go ahead and forward your question to your account representative so that they can contact you to answer those questions individually. So Mark, um, I'm going to go ahead and give this next question to you, please. Okay. Why is there a continued push to use digital when studies show that print is the more trusted medium? So there, there's no doubt that print is going to remain probably the more trusted source of marketing. And you know, it's even been said that millennials are paying more attention to direct mail. It's also true that the volume of direct mail is down compared to, say, 10 years ago. Because if you can think about all the online bill pay and paperless billing tactics the companies are using, the volume of mail that you get on a daily basis has shrunk. Um, but the one thing you can't ignore is how much screen time that consumers are spending or you know, kind of using on a daily basis. Um, think about the amount of time you're spending online actively consuming content, right? So not having your message in a space where consumers are actively engaged really does not make any sense. I encourage you to explore the other channels of digital media that work well, uh, but incorporate that with your direct mail program. If you're unsure about which direction is probably best for you, um, your Accudata rep is here to help you and to guide you in making recommendations. Excellent. Thank you. So a lot of people are really interested in our email append capabilities. And we have a question regarding the differences between the specific email append to the individual level and the household level email append. Okay. Mark, would you go ahead and address that difference? Sure. So an individual level email append means you give me my name and address, Mark Scott, 123 Main Street, and I will return a match only if I can match Mark Scott at that address. Um, the difference to a household level would be if there is another Scott at that address, then it is a household level match. And you know, in some use cases, the email message has to be very specific to the individual. A lot of times, we are actually doing email marketing, and it could it could work with anybody in the household, depending on, again what the product or service is. So, household level email attends have also proven to be very effective. Great, thank you so much. And another question on email attending: Would you please review the expected average match rate? 
for the household level versus the specific level of pen? Sure. So using individual level only, so my name, my address, uh, you can probably expect around a 25% match rate or so. When you add the household level component to it, your overall match rate goes up to closer to 45, sometimes even 50%. Excellent. Thanks so much. So our next question is related to creative services. And uh, we have a viewer asking if they submit a direct mail piece to us that their client is currently using, are we able to build that into a digital creative? So Nate, would you address that for us, please? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure if I, if I actually mentioned that when I was showing the example, but um, we, we, we actually, the team specializes in HTML conversion and banner creative from direct mail pieces. So if you have something that you're already using that you're putting in the mail stream, you can supply it to us and then we can format that digital side of things that, that, again, creates that consistent theme across the different channels. Excellent. Thank you so much. Our next question is, um, with the given holiday season coming up so quickly, is it possible to go ahead and get a digital campaign launched yet this year? Mark, would you address that for us? Sure. Thank you. Um, I think there's plenty of time, but I'd recommend acting quickly if you're trying to hit something for, say, a Black Friday event because we need typically about a week or so to build out the creative, identify the online audience, uh, get things tested and proofed and approved. Um, if you're thinking a little further in, you know, down the road, say into December, um, you know, just make sure you build in about that week turnaround time um, so that way you don't end up in a time crunch. Um, if you do have the design work done, email campaigns can be launched relatively quickly, uh, but again, it just depends on how far down that road you've gone. Um, the front end design is just as important as the back end tracking. So the last, my last comment on it would be, um, we can do all of the front end design work, we can get it all set up, but make sure that you've got the tracking enabled on the back end so you can see what that engagement is uh, based on activity on those online ads. Excellent, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate all of your participation with the questions. We still have a ton of questions rolling in, but we are just over our time limit. Uh, so to be cognizant of that. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up today, but for all of you that have submitted questions that we did not have an opportunity to address, we will go ahead and reach out to you individually to make sure that you have all of the information you need. And just as a reminder, your copy of our new multi-channel marketing guide will be delivered to you via email this afternoon. And if you have any questions on how you can integrate multi-channel marketing into your product toolkit, we invite you to contact us using info at accudata.com or by reaching out to your account representative. Thank you all so much, and I hope you have a very enjoyable afternoon. Bye-bye.